And welcome to the November edition of the Sports Drive. The coach, Doug Biega, the main man, PJ Latsko here at Beaver County Auto out in Chippewa. A lot of uh, topics to talk about, gentlemen. We'll start off with our Stillers. Um, Doug, do me a favor, though. Don't, if you get mad, do not bang PJ on the head with a helmet. Okay? You to hold everything in. Okay. Uh, Steelers are banged up. Uh, there's no, they're going to be without Pouncey. James Conner's likely not going to play. Juju's not going to play. Deontay, I don't know who they're going to have on offense to throw to. However, they're playing the Bengals. Uh, Steelers still have their defense for the most part. Uh, some people are worried about that game. Or you? Well, you took the words out of my mouth and you said, how are, I don't know how the offenses are going to do. I don't know how either offenses are going to score. I don't know what the total is on that game, but I guarantee you it's in the 30s. Uh, I can't see either team scoring a great deal of points. The Steelers' offense is kind of anemic anyway right now. Now they're banged up. And Cincinnati's offensive line is the worst in the NFL. And the Steelers still could put some pressure on the quarterback with Watt and with Hayward so, and Dupree. I, I still I think the Steelers will win with no problem. But I think it's going to be like 17-3, 14-3 in those on there. Under. Ugly, ugly game to watch. I like, I like under. the under. I like the under. So then it'll probably be like thirty to right. It'll be a shootout. You know what right. I mean? As soon as we hit seven, our, our defense is gonna have to carry the day. Our defense has played exceptionally well all year. We're gonna have to have eight sacks, a couple of interceptions, and and have a good special team. Which is day. realistic and against this team. It is. And I remember a couple games in Cincy where we kicked five field goals and won fifteen to seven or something like that. So. Uh, there's no way we lose this game. All right, Darren, put, put your coaches on, uh, put coach's hat on here for a second. Uh, everyone's looking ahead to next week. How does Mike Tomlin, because you know everyone since they play the Browns next week, yeah. uh, and they play uh, the only winless team in the NFL this week. Does Mike Tom, is that something you're worried about, that those guys are, are already have the focus on getting retribution against the Browns? Well, you would hope that professional athletes don't think like that. Uh, I don't think motivating or focus should be any problem right now because right now the way the Steelers are in the, in the playoff race, they're in a single elimination. They lose another game anytime real soon. They're done. And I think they know that. So they, they should have, you know, they didn't anticipate losing to Cleveland last week. Uh, so now every game is a must-win game. And, you know, I, and I don't think focus should be any problem there at all. All right, PJ, we talked about the defense. That's been their calling card all season. The two names, TJ Watt. Mink and Fitzpatrick, if you had a vote for the Steelers uh, MVP on this team, where would you I'm go? I'm going to pick the new D-back, Fitzpatrick. I mean, he has solidified that whole defense. He, when he has a chance to intercept the ball, he catches it, and then he makes something happen with it. Uh, Watt's having a great year. Dupree's having a great year. Uh, but the whole defense as a whole, I think when we got him, and they're saying he's always in the right place at the right time where he's supposed to be, and that lets everybody else – just worry about where they're supposed to be. And you know, coaching basketball, when you call a play, your guys got to be where they're supposed where to they're be, supposed or else that screws everything up. Yep. So the, I would go with the new guy. I didn't like the trade when we made it, but man, I like it now. Well, they're playing it into a good trade right yeah. now. The more they win, the better the trade becomes because the draft pick drops down the first round. So if they had gone terribly since the trade, then it was a bad trade, but they played their way into a good trade. I think Fitzpatrick's the MVP because of the turnaround that he provided. They could cover tight ends now. Uh, which was what they haven't been able to do in years. But if you look back at our archives, you see before the, in our preseason segment, I said T.J. Watt would get some Defensive Player of the Year consideration in the NFL, and he's crazy good this year. So I kind of hope he ends up winning it, but I, I think Fitzpatrick is the catalyst behind this big change. All right, Doug, we're going to switch over to hoops here for a second. Uh -huh. uh, Speaking of ugly, Pitt had an ugly one the other night. They won. They beat Monmouth. Uh, West Virginia, the second half, was just uh, abysmal as far as scoring. Is that what we're going to see out of this team? Do you expect incremental uh, – you know, what, what are your expectations for Pitt this season as far as, uh, you know, they won 14 games last season. Freshman and are now sophomore. He did add yeah. some people. But, you know, what, what's a realistic uh, – expectation for a fan base I mean, they have three now right so you're hoping for 11 more wins to equal last year I don't think that's out of uh, out of reason uh, I don't think they're as good a basketball team as last year as crazy as that sounds I think those two freshmen played better last year than they are so far this year uh, they're gonna struggle to score they're struggling to score in your exhibition schedule and then you start rolling in ACC schedule where everybody on it has two or three seven footers I don't see how they're gonna score the ball inside 
I, the Florida State game, which was a big win for them, was an ugly basketball game. They just played a little bit better than Florida State. But I don't see how they're going to sustain offensively. If Johnson keeps playing the way he is, they're really going to struggle to score. Uh, they need some easy buckets, and I don't think those are very easy to find in the ACC. I was at the West Virginia game. It was a good game for the first half. Uh, the second half, that Oscar just took the game over. And West Virginia had four or five, six, nine, and taller guys that they were rotating in and out. I mean, Pitt just had no answer. Couldn't for score. They had no answer yeah. for it. And and when you can't bring the ball inside, your your guards are covered when they're shooting. It's going to be now, is Johnson and, and Trey, are they going to get better as it goes on? I think, yeah, because last year they proved they're good basketball players. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to see how they get coached, and, and hopefully they – come back to what they were last year. Yeah, they were two really good guards last year. Yeah, they, they better. Quite, Doug, uh, one other – we get a lean on you as the coach here. I love Capel's analogy the other day after the game when he was asked about Xavier Johnson and he used the Rocky reference as far as when Mark Rocky was trying to be the champion. He had that eye of the tiger and he worked harder. And then when he got there – you know, things sure. – you, you almost feel as though you arrived. And he and Xavier had that conversation about he needs to have that chip on his shoulder. You like that? I, I don't see how he has it any other way. You're not talking about a blue chipper, right? Like, so I don't know where the um, lack of work would come into that psyche. Maybe the NBA talk. I, I heard the NBA talk, too. I, quite honestly, I just never saw it. Uh, but it, maybe it's just different personalities. If you hear the NBA talk, you would think that would – motivate you to take your work ethic and your game to a whole other level. Um, you know, not in the NFL when you get that big contract, the money's guaranteed, you kind of get fat, you know what I mean, uh, metaphorically. Uh, in college, you hear NBA talk, you should be like, I, this could change my life. I gotta, I'm gonna do this, this, and this even more. Because what I was doing was working, now let me do it on steroids, you know, not literally, yeah. but let me, let me do that. Um, I, don't, I don't understand the dip in performance. Maybe it's mental. Maybe there's a lot of pressure on himself thinking I'm an NBA prospect. I have to do this, this, and this, and it's just not happening. And he's pressing a bit, almost like a baseball player is in a slump. Uh, you're, you're chasing, trying to hit home runs instead of just making contact. That could be what he's going through right now, too. All right, PJ, we're going to move over to pit football here. Uh, two games left. Once again, Pat Narduzzi has this team in line to play in the ACC championship game uh, against – Clemson down in Charlotte. They need to win out. Virginia Tech needs to beat Virginia. You know, regardless if that happens or not, what's this, where does Pat Narduzzi have this program now? Uh, it seems to be on any questions about him, I, I think are pretty much a race now. Cause you, I think it's right? trending up. I mean, two years in a row that they can win their side of the ACC with the, I mean, they have issues too. I mean, you watch their games, they're close games. Uh, their offense is a little questionable at times, but their defense is playing some awesome football. Uh, I was at the game at Duke. That was a big win. Um, this, I mean, Virginia Tech started out bad, but they're playing good football right now. Really good. I mean, they're playing really good football, and we're going, I think this game's at, at uh, Tech. Back, so yep. it's going to be another exciting game. And that's a rivalry game, Virginia-Virginia yeah. Tech. So, you know, that, that could very easily swing uh, in Pitt's favor with a Virginia Tech win. Uh, but Pitt needs to focus on the task at hand, which is their next two opponents. They can't – because they can't slip up. It's just a it, – he just has the program out of stability right now. There's, it's, there's, it's, yeah. it's incredibly consistent and incredibly stable right now. If you were playing for your side, like PJ said, your side of a conference championship now for the third straight year, you're kind of in the mix. I mean, what, what else can you ask for? All right, we're going to do a bonus question. Normally, we only do four, but uh, we're almost in the holiday season, so we're going to throw oh, we're them. We're doing two bonus questions. <laughs> we're going to do a little stock. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that at the end of the taping. A uh, little stocking stuffer here. Um, Colin Kaepernick uh, had his uh, day in the media this week uh, with his workout in front of uh, uh, eight or so NFL scouts. Antonio Brown this week met with uh, Commissioner Roger Goodell and is seeking reinstatement to the league. Uh, Mark Garagas, Colin Kaepernick's agent, predicted that uh, within 10 days, he'll get an offer. Uh, Antonio Brown thinks he'll play as well. What say you, which one of those two do you believe, if any, will play in, the, play in, the, in their uh, league I don't think 2019? I going to play this year. 
I think AB will probably get his stuff sorted out over the off season, and I'm sure someone will will take another chance on him. Um, I'm not so sure on Kaepernick. I mean, a lot of teams need quarterbacks. A lot of teams are down to two, three, four quarterbacks, and he's still not signed. I mean, I what's that mean? He's 32 now. The the, the tape I saw, the guy can still throw a football. You know, no pads, nobody chasing them, nobody. I mean, it's been a while since he's been out there. Yeah. Uh, I, I think AB next year, I, I have no idea on Kaepernick. There's so many variables in this question. If you're just asking me point blank, I would say neither one is going to play this year. Uh, from what I've gathered from the information I've seen, Kaepernick is not asking for backup money either. So no one really talks about the contract uh, demands. He's looking for starter money. And I don't know that he's a starting quarterback right now of that tort type of demanding that type of salary. If Antonio Brown gets cleared, like anytime soon, someone will pick him up. A, a contender will pick him up. Philly, maybe even New England again. I mean, they Pittsburgh. Well, yeah, maybe <laughs> not New England more than anybody else cares about winning. So they would forgive and forget very quickly uh, if he is cleared of any wrongdoings legally. But until he is, he's toxic. You can't put him on your, on your roster because you're going to be answering interview questions about him every day. And that's exactly what you don't want to do with either one of those guys, which is why I don't think either one's going to be signed. All right, man. Uh, another good addition here. We will see you in December. PJ, what, uh, what specials we got, uh, uh, what, we what have got going on this month? Employee pricing to everybody. Employee pricing to everybody on the uh, Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram side. Over here at Nissan, we have Black Friday events. Um, there are good deals on absolutely everything in stock right now. All right, guys. And we have a lot. A lot. A lot of cars. That means they need, they need to go. They need to go. All right, guys. We'll see you uh, next month for another edition of the Sports Drive. Coach Doug Viega, PJ Latsko. Happy Thanksgiving.